Folks, new trailer. I'll let you watch it, and then we're going to talk about it. Of course, if you want to see the whole thing, head over to Total War's channel, it because it is theirs, not mine. Years. But this city will never be safe. Not whilst he is still out there. So there you have it, folks. Um, the Warden and the Paunch. Prince Eltharion versus the gigantic, the biggest, the fattest, the Paunch from the Greenskins. So this is going to pit one of our New World factions against one of the old in an awesome DLC, which is going to bring a whole bunch of new content, as well as a complete rework to the Greenskin faction. So it's going to be pretty darn exciting. Let's talk about some of the details. I'll share some artwork. We'll mention the units and get you some analysis. So let's get things started over on the um, fact page here for the Warden and the Paunch. This will be linked in the description. And just to kind of, you know, make sure everybody understands, what you're getting here in this DLC is um, going to be a couple of new legendary lords, and each of them have their own factions, objectives, mechanics, units, play style, and they can be used in both the Vortex and Mortal Empire campaign as well as multiplayer and custom battles so they're available in absolutely all of that now eltharion commands Ivress, which is a faction on kind of the eastern side of ulth one and um grom is going to lead the broken axe tribe and neither one of these even even though they're involved in the vortex campaign neither one of them is in the vortex race they're going to have their own um basically fight against each other and their own unique path to that fight which is very interesting um, so what do you get if you buy the DLC, the two Legendary Lords, Eltharion and Grom? You get um, the new units that come with those, um, and we'll talk about those units more in a minute over on the Steam page. And then um, there's going to be new regiments for now. So that's what comes with the DLC, and again, those are playable in both Vortex um, and Mortal Empires as well as multiplayer. <clears throat> so when is it going to launch? The 21st of May, so about two weeks from now. So you don't have to wait that long. Um, they're doing the typical 10% pre-purchase discount, blah, blah, blah. First couple of questions they, they answer here, we've already covered. And then it, when it says units, this is in the Steam page. We'll jump over there in a minute. Um, this is the big one, though. It says, will there be an old world update released with the Ward and the Paunch? It says, the green skins will be getting a number of updated features, most notably a rework of the WA. And this is very exciting, folks. So the rework of the WA is pretty exciting. I think you all know how it worked in the past. It was not terribly fulfilling. Your WA army would go off and do its own weird thing, get killed, never cooperate with you. And so the WA has been reworked to where it's this pooled resource. You have to build it up to a maximum in order to start what's called a WA invasion. Once you do start it, you dedicate it to either Gork or Mork, um, and then a transported Wa army will then support uh, each of your available armies uh, to occupy or raise a target that you select. So you're going to be picking a target, uh, and it says after a set duration, the Wa will end, your points will drop to zero, and based on the success of your Wa, you get rewards, including a Wa boost. Um, you can build up WAP points again to trigger it. So this is a really cool new rework. Plus, there's a new feature for the Greenskins called Scrap, 
And this one's really exciting, and I hope we kind of see more of this um, for other factions, obviously, in different ways. But basically, green skins will scavenge items off the battlefield. You can kind of see this in the way that they build things, and the way their architecture and kind of armor and everything looks. They basically just pick up whatever they come across. And um, basically, they can uh, you can pick up this scrap, um, which is going to be from battles and settlements, and you can use it to upgrade um, uh, certain units. Um, and uh, this is going to be a pretty cool feature. All the different units will have several different upgrade options, and basically it's going to help you increase the strength and functionality of the different units in your Greenskin army. So scrap is going to be a really cool uh, new feature for the Greenskins. On top of that, um, there's some other updates for the Greenskins. There's going to be new character skills, unit improvements, Badlands map update, and that's, that's going to be a cool one. You'll get to see more of that soon. Um, a new start position for Azag and his own faction, so that's also going to be pretty exciting. So now the green skins are going to have unique starts and stuff. be really cool. Um, and then uh, this last one here is really fun when it says, What's the free LC content launching next to it? And CA always does these free LCs. Um, and it's going to be the High Elves, and it's the Lord of Dragons, Prince Emric. And they say they'll release more information soon, but at least we get to know what it is, um, and obviously that free content is going to be available on the same day um, as the DLC itself on the 21st. Um, and let's switch over to the Steam page. Here we are. Let's let's get into it on the Steam page. Um, I've had it explained to me from multiple people because you know lore of Warhammer is not something I'm terribly immersed in, but Eltharion is basically High Elf Batman, and um, you're going to kind of see that he even kind of looks that way on his on his mount there, um, and so. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's High Elf Batman. It says, uh, Long has he stood as the sentinel of Tor of Res, ever watchful for signs of greenskin incursion. So that's pretty much his, his thing. He, he's going to kill the greenskins. But there's some exciting factions here, or is there's some exciting new things here you all are going to like. So one of the new things that you're going to get as Eltharion is Athel Tamarha. This is a cool fortress um, that plays out in the campaign. Um, you're able to... Uh, use a special ability in battle to potentially capture and imprison heroes and lords, and they'll be available for interrogation and other things. I think you all are really going to like this one. Um, and as far as uh, the dungeon itself, uh, it has a bunch of structures that can be rebuilt as you gain the right resources through the campaign. Uh, those are here on the Steam page. I'm not going to simply read out all of them, but basically there's special units that can be um, recruited uh, as this faction. They are campaign specific units called Mistwalker units and it talks about them here and you can uh, get more of those and upgrade them by upgrading uh, Athel Tamarha and um, there's also other chains of buildings that enable you to interrogate the captured lords and heroes and there's benefits from that and then uh, basically you can get useful information and other other things from it. Um, the Mist of Ivress is a new uh, feature also for the Ivress faction. It's probably similar in some ways to like the Sandstorm that the Tomb Kings can pop up in an ability. It causes a whole lot of attrition to enemy armies that come in and also uh, it helps your army uh, become stronger. Um, so it's really a cool way to help protect your territory. And then there's this Defense of Ivress uh, which is kind of like a bar at the top that builds up, and as you build it up to its full strength, it basically brings Ivress back up to its full strength and puts you in a better position to be ready for when Grom does eventually return, and you have to fight that. Um, and it comes with this this uh, extra right they have to the invocation of Ladriel, um, which is what basically empowers the Mist of Ivress that we discussed earlier. Now, as far as new units and characters, obviously Eltharion here is your legendary lord, and he has a mount, which is the Griffin Stormwing, and this is a particularly awesome-looking mount. Um, and he has a spear and sword. Uh, he's a caster of high magic, which means that he's kind of a hybrid character. He's going to be very good in melee, while also being a solid caster, so maybe similar to something like a Manfred von Karstein or a Malekith um, in terms of how he can play. There is a new uh, lord. I say a new lord. It's actually multiple, kind of. Um, there's an archmage lord available now for the high elves. This is very exciting. Basically, the high elves get access to all the core eight core uh, lores of magic, and it's very very exciting because this is going to give you a lot of options for lords um, with the high elves having these archmages. So really cool stuff there. 
There are going to be a bunch of new campaign exclusive units. Um, I've gotten to use these because, yes, I have a press build. I don't know what all I can say about them yet because there's only so much that is mentioned here about them. But these are the units that you can recruit uh, specifically in the campaign with Ivress and they can be buffed by the Athel Tamarha um, Fortress. I'll talk more about these as we get to release more to you. But yes, here's a listing of them. You got the Skyhawks, the Sentinels of Astaral, the Spire Guard of Tor of Res, Athel Tamarha Faithbearers. Um, so really cool stuff here. Uh, the Knights of Tor Gaval. Um, and this is going to be, uh, and it says Talented Wingman in Ulf 1. So obviously it's the flying unit. Um, so I'm very excited to show this to you all. And there's also a couple of new regiments of renown. We get the Talons of Tor uh, Kaleda which is an archer with light armor, and uh, the Talons of uh, Tor... Uh, sorry, uh, Regara's Pride, which is a war lion of Trace, and then the Omen of Assyrian, which is an arcane phoenix. It's going to be some really cool stuff. I'll go into these in more detail as we're able to release that. Now, from the Greenskin Sky side, uh, we get Grom the Pranch leading a Broken Axe tribe. Let's start off with Grom's Cauldron. Um, he's got this insatiable appetite. You gotta feed this guy. He's hungry. He hungry. Okay, you gotta go around getting food for Grom the Paunch, all right? And uh, this is gonna allow him to unlock a wide range of different uh, abilities and uh, buffs from this. It's gonna be very exciting. You can combine ingredients to form dishes, each of which provide unique buff to Grom's and his army. Uh, some dishes can add special units to his army. Um, and cooking up and sampling a certain number of dishes will permanently enhance Grom himself. So that is pretty awesome. We got Blacktooth here. Um, basically, it says during the legendary WoW, old Blacktooth was basically the uh, most trusted shaman uh, for, uh, for Grom. But of course, Eltharion cut his head off. But he was able to cheat death because of all the magic. And um, it's uh, pretty cool. It says, so while Niblet is Grom's chief advisor, Blacktooth will from time to time utter guidance to Grom delivering tasks. Um, and uh, molding the journey. Blacktooth's head will also take on the role of a special item in Grom's campaign, may be assigned to a shaman granting immunity to summon, uh, or granting the ability to summon a rogue idol, which is another one of the new ones. So this is really cool. Uh, so yeah, we get Grom, um, and it says, uh, styled it like the king of goblins. He has a mighty axe, and he rides atop a sturdy chariot. Um, so this is going to, and his uh, assistant and standard bearer, Niblet, is along with him on the chariot, which is really cool stuff. I love this Greenston stuff. Um, basically, um, he's going to inspire other troops around him, and uh, as he gets into combat, that inspiration and ability buffing is going to uh, become greater. Um, and it says he's always mounted across the Chariot of Grom. Uh, you're also going to have a new hero here. This is a giant river hag troll, which is going to be a death caster. Really cool uh, new thing that we're going to get to see. Snotling pump wagons. I, the name of these is just amazing. And they look awesome, too. We've seen these in the trailer. Hurdles towards foes. Um, and uh, it rumbles under its own power with momentum provided by snotlings who frantically pump crude contraptions and cranks to drive it. And that's exactly what it is. Um, there's another version of it with flappers. Uh, it says crude wings attached to flap up and down by the actions. Allows the pump wagon to make short jumps as it bounces along. And so that's going to be interesting to see. And then there's a snotling pump wagon with spiky rollers. Uh, and uh, obviously it's probably going to cause like extra damage or something like that. You get River Trolls, um, which is going to be really cool. It's a new troll unit. Um, they're absolutely disgusting. Um, they're covered in stink. And um, it's going to create uh, different uh, issues in battle for their enemies. We got Stone Trolls, uh, which is going to be another new troll unit. Um, they, uh, I'm, I'm it says the natural magical inertia of which imbues them with a certain degree of magic resistance so it's going to be another variant of trolls that we'll take a, a bigger look at eventually and then we get a rogue idol which we've seen in the tra trailer too these are the big rock monsters that are pulling up uh mighty magical constructs to batter city walls and anything else that gets in their way and then the uh the new regiments renowned um there's going to be a snotling pump wagon which is the spore splotas this is just an, an amazing name all by itself uh the swamp things <laughs> <laughs> River Trolls, gotta love this one. And the big one, which is a rogue idol. So folks, there is so much content inbound. Make sure you go check out these things for yourself um, and get ready for some really awesome stuff in Warhammer 2 campaign. I can't wait to show you more of this. Um, I do believe we were told that we could share our schedule with you. So keep an eye out um, on May 8th 
that'll be the next time I can bring you some content. Um, and then after that, uh, there'll be some more coming on, I believe it's the 12th and 13th. Um, if I get those wrong, apologize, but that's roughly the, the next pieces. I won't say exactly what because I don't want to overstep my bounds. But anyway, can't wait to see you all then. Um, chat about it in the comments. I'll answer what questions I can. Of course, anything that's not embargoed. Um, and uh, join the Discord if you want to continue uh, talking with other players about this. I've got an awesome Discord community. They're over there talking about it right now, so make sure you get over there. Anyway, Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I will see you all soon.